Welcome to the podcast, Kishan. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're excited about this when you're home for uh, Thanksgiving. How long are you in town for? So I'm only in town for a couple days. I'm uh, here visiting from Orlando. Uh, I'm coming up on final season in law school. And so I'm looking forward to uh, just a relaxing holiday with the family this week. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that we uh, were able to catch you for just a little bit of that time. Hate to do something business related, but, uh, you know, hopefully this is a little bit not work related, you know? Absolutely. So, uh, appreciate you making time in your schedule. So for those who don't know you, um, go ahead and give a little bit of a background of, of your story, you know, where you're from and some of the things that you've been involved in that I figure we'll go from there and dive into each thing individually. Sure. Um, so my name's Keyshawn Patel. I'm originally from Pensacola, Florida. I was uh, actually born and raised here and decided to attend undergraduate school here. So from uh, elementary school, I went to Longleaf, to middle school, I went to Woodham Middle, and then I went to West Florida High School um, and thoroughly enjoyed my childhood here. Um, Upon deciding where to go to school, I was looking at all the universities in the state of Florida, and something just kept pulling me to the University of West Florida, uh, and I ended up staying here. Um, I worked all throughout high school. I worked uh, from Publix to Men's Warehouse, so if you've ever bought a suit in this city, you may have run into me at some point. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And if Men's Warehouse is a good networking job, man. Yeah. It is. It's a great networking job and uh, truly one of the places where uh, a young individual, whether they're going through high school or college, can learn a lot of great skills mm-hmm. from speaking to presenting uh, and understanding how to work with clients one-on-one. Um, a lot of my role revolved around helping people with their weddings, uh, and that's the biggest day of most people's lives. Mm-hmm. And so it's always an honor to be a part of that. And so I did that for a couple of years. Uh, and then when I went to UWF, I decided to study political science and criminal justice. And I thoroughly enjoyed that degree um, and got involved at UWF. I was very lucky to have some great mentors uh, and other students, uh, you know, a couple names in particular from uh, Jake Abair, who I worked directly under, uh, Daniel McBurney. Uh, Basil Coloba, Yasmin Hernandez, Dylan Williams. There's a number of names of people that are the reason why I got involved in the first place. Mm-hmm. And uh, I actually eventually ran for student body president uh, and successfully won. And that landed me uh, a seat on the board of trustees with uh, some very influential individuals in the community. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was able to be a part of changes at UWF that I would have never assumed to have uh, been a part of. And something in me, and you know, a big motivation from Jake Abair, who served as president before me at UWF, uh, was to run for the statewide position. Um, and Jake Abair, who is someone who I will always, you know, admire for his guidance towards me, uh, encouraged me to consider it because he had once filled that position. Hmm. And that position specifically was a seat at the board of governors for the state university system, representing all 12 institutions and nearly 400,000 students. Uh, and Jake Abair had filled that seat, you know, during the term that I was his vice president. And when I became president, uh, I got, you know, his blessing to run for it. And I got my vice president, Yasmin Hernandez, uh, her blessing to, to run for that position. And I did a statewide tour to see if I could get myself a seat there to represent students. Uh, it, again, it's, it wasn't a job. It wasn't a, you know, a paid job by any means. It was a totally voluntary position. Uh, but I had it in me to have this desire to go out and make changes for the entire state. Yeah, you're doing something important. Yeah, it, 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 for me, it was a, a giving back to the community. Mm-hmm. Um, my my family, specifically my father, has always taught me that if you're not giving your energy and your effort back into the community, then really, what are you working towards, mm-hmm. right? I mean, you can work for your own self, you know, desire or your own self fulfillment, whether that's you know making money or you know getting a you know dream job. Uh, for me, it's always been trying to figure out how I can help the people around me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was college students. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I think there's a big disconnect between what college students really face versus what people see on TV <laughs> or in movies. Yep, 100%. Yeah. And they think that college kids go to school and they party and get trashed and, you know, they waste their day and they sleep all day and then show up to class and go home and party. That's not the case. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of real oh, world. It's not. <laughs> not usually the case. You? <laughs> no, not usually the case. There's, you know, there's a lot of people who face 
issues in, in college um, yeah. to, to no fault of any individual you know person or agency or system, um, but there are things that just needed to be addressed. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was thankful to be a part of that system to help address some of those issues. Hmm. Interesting. So that's wow. a little short background. I know I kind of went from childhood to, to adulthood. No, that's no, good. I mean, so. it's it's a weird thing to be like, hey, give me your life story. But I yeah. feel like that was a really good synopsis. Good rundown. Um, yeah. So how long of a, a term? Is it just year by year for the, the statewide? Yeah. So the statewide position, uh, in order to be eligible to sit for that seat, you have to be one of the 12 student body presidents in the state of Florida. Gotcha. So you're and running against 11 others. Exactly. And, and that's if, you know, who has interest, right? So there's a sure. board called the Florida Student Association. Um, and that board is comprised of the 12 student body presidents across the state. Um, and that was established probably more than 50 years ago. I should know the exact date, but wow. I've been a couple years out of college, so yeah, I don't have yeah. all my That's dates okay. on we it. Want, we're sure. not testing you on it. <laughs> um, and about 50 years ago, you know, some very smart individuals came together and said, we need to work together as student body presidents to go to the state and say, hey, here are some of the issues we're facing. And mm-hmm. so uh, that board called Florida Student Association um, – between the 12 individuals, whoever has an interest in running. And so I ran against three other uh, individuals um, and was able to uh, win. And the year prior, UWF was lucky because Jake Abair, who was also going to say two in a row. Won. Yeah. And we've actually been very thankful because I don't think in the history of FSA, there was ever a back to back university mm-hmm. that held that seat. Yeah. Um, and more importantly, we got very lucky because uh, within a four-year period, we actually had three student body presidents on that board, wow. uh, which included Zanani Johnson, who came a couple years after. Uh, and so to see three student body presidents, yeah. uh, especially you know with the, the, the type of environment the, the school system is in, it's such an honor to say that UWF had a seat at that table. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, and it could have been any school, right? Mm-hmm. It could have been any of the 12 universities from yeah. UCF being one of the largest in the, in the country to UF to FSU. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, a large part of that is a testament of, of UWF's leadership, mm-hmm. uh, including, you know, Dr. Saunders, who's the president there and many of the trustees there that mm-hmm. have created this platform for students to succeed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's incredible. I mean, really, you look at, we've talked about this. We just had Walker Wilson on a couple weeks ago um, and, you know, talking about Pensacola is really a small to medium sized town. Um, it's, it's pretty small. Once you've been here for a little while, it shrinks. Mm-hmm. I feel like, um, every, everybody is pretty, you know, related and interconnected. But having said that you are, we're up against a lot of other like FSU, UCF, like you said, just bigger schools, just plain and simple. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's really interesting. And like you said, that's a testament to the program at UWF. Um, and I mean, I don't want to talk about UWF the whole time, but it is interesting. That's part of your, your background. So yeah. w- what do you think maybe sets them apart? What do you, what things do you think UWF does really, really well? I think the answer for me is it's very personalized, right? So if you go to a large, and I guess I should say this for the record, I don't work at UWF. Uh, I'm <laughs> not, not affiliated with UWF, UWF. Yeah. right? So this isn't my opportunity to plug them. Uh, but I think it's important because students have to think back to what system they were a part of. And I believe that today I'm in law school and involved in so many different not-for-profits, primarily because of the things that UWF taught mm-hmm. me. So when I was in high school, senior year, every student's thinking about where they're supposed to go to college, mm-hmm. You know, whether that's college or if it's joining the military, all the great things that people want to do. For me, the obvious answer was to leave town. Mm-hmm. And I told my parents, I'm going to leave town and I'm going to go to a big school because, you know, I see it on ESPN and I see the mm-hmm. football games being played. Mm-hmm. And I had a mentor. His name was Dr. Kevin Bailey. And coincidentally, he was actually one of uh, my client customers at Men's Warehouse. Mm-hmm. And he said, let me let me pick your brain on why you're deciding to leave mm-hmm. to go to a big school. Now, real quick, is, is Men's Warehouse where you met him or... So I actually met Dr. Bailey officially through Men's Warehouse, and okay. then I had just growing up in this community. I had also you seen had him in different some... ties with him. Right, interesting. But you were exposed, and I—that's—I don't mean to interrupt you, but no, that's such an interesting thing. Um, you were in a spot at Men's Warehouse where you had those opportunities coming in, and I've had similar things. We've talked about, you know, when I was working there, I, I met different people that I'm like, oh, the, you know, I realized one day I was like, this is a, a good spot because typically high quality people are coming in here. Um, and so just having said that it's, it's awesome to take a position where you're at, where it could just be a job and you could have had really any other job. I mean, you you probably weren't making, you weren't making more money there than you could have made other places presumably, but where you were, you, you took that and, and leveraged it into something that 
snowballed into much bigger things. Mm-hmm. So I just I wanted to highlight that because yeah. that's really interesting to me. Well, yeah. M- Mikey, in my, in my opinion, no matter what you're involved in, right? Whether that is going on a daily walk in your neighborhood or if it's going to the mall, going to the grocery yeah. store, you're going to always run into people that have different walks of life. Yeah. 100%. And those walks of life are going to give you advice on things that you never would have been exposed to in the different first place. Perspectives. Right. And so 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 back to to Dr. Bailey, he asked me, he said, why do you want to leave? And I couldn't come up with a good enough reason. <laughs> Just seems like that's the thing to do. Right. Mm-hmm. But he was the first person to challenge me on the why. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have a good enough answer. And I was actually embarrassed. And so I spent weeks thinking about it, speaking with my family, talking to my parents about what the right steps were. And I realized that I could either leave and go to a big school or I could go to UWF where my professors are going to get to know who I am as a person. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be a student with a name in a classroom, Mm -hmm. right? So at at UWF, I'm sitting in a classroom with 20 people. The odds are my professor is going to get to know who who you are as an individual. on a personal level. Whereas if you're in a classroom with 500 Mm -hmm. people, you're a student (laughs) ID number. And that's not a dig at any major massive school. Well, it's It's a give and take. It is what it is. But it's the way that I learn. I learn better with that one-on-one if my professor understands who I am and how I learn as an individual. Um, because I've always had a difficult time studying. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I'm sure later into the podcast, I'd love to talk about inertia, which is a not-for-profit I'm involved in. But, you know, a, a part of the, the the way of life is understanding how you learn mm-hmm. and how you learn things in a unique way. Because it's very, un, it's almost impossible for an entire classroom of people to all have the same learning style. Yeah, it's just not r- realistic. So for me to know that my professors were going to get to know who I was and how I learned and the challenges that I needed on a one-on-one level were one of the reasons why I chose UWF. And and then my argument was, okay, I'll go here for one year. Mm-hmm. I'll get you know my basic courses out of the way, and then I'll leave. Well, I got involved, and I decided I love this place too much. There's no reason to leave anymore. There's no reason to leave. Pensacola is up and coming. There's a lot of great progress being made. I know you mentioned earlier, you know, you know, Walker was on this uh, podcast. I mean, even he's getting involved in the downtown improvement board. And it's amazing to see somebody, you know, within our younger category of Pensacola to start becoming that voice for what we want to see in the future. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I was actually, you know, so excited to see that happen. And I think Pensacola is on the right bound of getting people involved. Absolutely. Um, Because if not, then we're going to start to lose some of the talent. We're going to lose some of the active people in the community um, if if things don't continuously progress. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I'm stoked to see that happen. And so big shout out to him for that. It's cool. And that was a really enjoyable talk that we had with him. Um, And I guess that, that same thing he's talking about, you know, professionals, young professionals leaving. We were talking about on a college level, but it's the same thing is true. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Pensacola has so much to offer. And for you, it took someone saying, Hey, why do you want to go? Mm-hmm. You know, we have here something that would be better for your personal needs. Um, and I think it's easy for anybody who grows up in a small town to be like, man, I want to get out of here. You know, it's natural. But, um, when you can get involved in and affect change, then that's where it starts to get exciting. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's really cool to hear. Um, so that was kind of your time at, at UW and I mean, how did you enjoy, did you love being, obviously you enjoy being student body president enough to where you wanted to, to take it a step further. What was that like? So when I was a freshman at UWF, I got involved in student government there. Um, and I had done it in high school too. So from high school, uh, I went to West Florida high school and served as student body president and then um, okay, so continued that at, at the college level. For me, it was the fact that I was working with people that were so passionate. Mm-hmm. Right. This wasn't just a job. It wasn't a resume builder. It wasn't a, you know, I need to get involved in something. I was surrounded by a team of people who would stay up until three o'clock in the morning working on problems that students were facing and coming up with ideas to fix them. It's invigorating. Right. It'd be a Friday night and I'd have a team of people sending group chat messages saying, I have an idea. I have an idea. And that to me just blew me out of the water. And Mm -hmm. I knew that that was a group of people that I wanted to be around. Yeah. Um, because that showed me that, you know, college is way more than what they portrayed on TV. Yeah, right. And, and I knew that going into yeah. it, but I don't think a lot of people do because mm. they think, you know, if someone went to college in the seventies or eighties or nineties, or even the early two thousands, it's a lot different today. It is hmm. yeah. right. There's student life, there's activities, there's intramurals, there's sports teams. Mm-hmm. And at UWF, it 
felt that the student body was actually working towards better change. Mm-hmm. Um, and based on my conversations with individuals at other schools in different states, I didn't get that same feeling, mm-hmm. right? And maybe they were just, you know, not having that same experience, but I felt that experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I chose to get involved and stay involved. And, um, you know, there's there's a lot more to, to, to a university than just going to class, right? Yeah. There's extracurriculars. I was in, involved in a fraternity. I was in Sigma Alpha Epsilon. Um, and even there, there's this massive stereotype of, you know, if you're in a Frat fraternity boys. or sorority, yeah. then all you do is party and drink. And again, yeah. that's not the case. Mm-hmm. Majority of what we spent our time doing was trying to raise money for not-for-profits or trying to organize professional events for new members and teaching them the basics of life of how to be a public speaker or how to tie a tie, mm. right? These are things that you're not going to learn in a classroom. Yeah, You're not going to learn how to be a professional individual in the in the networking phase of life without having these experiences. And again, I think maybe at different universities, the experience may be different. Mm-hmm. But I know that at UWF, by getting involved, it shaped the definition of the direction I was heading in. Hmm. Uh, and it helped gr- grow me as an individual and as a young professional. And I'm forever indebted to that. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that. And I, yeah. I love you. One thing that you brought up is... Um, the people that you're surrounded by being passionate. That's such a huge thing. I mean, we all know you're the sum of the five people that you hang out with most or, you know, your circle is who you are. Um, I think a lot of times, especially in high school, I notice, um, you know, just thinking back on, on people that I went to high school with or seeing high schoolers now, I think it's, it's cool not to care about stuff. It's, it's not cool to be too, you know, unless it's sports or something like that. It's not cool to be too into anything. Yeah, Yeah. Passionate, but that's not at all true. I mean, if you're passionate about something, if you find the other people who are passionate about that same thing or, or their own specific things, and even, even now working with, um, you know, working with Danny and doing things like this is what we're excited about Mm -hmm. and, and you can feed off each other's energy and and it just drives further and further. Mm -hmm. I think a very important part of that too, is surrounding yourself with people that you wouldn't otherwise be around. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Because I surrounded myself with people who I didn't agree with one bit. Mm -hmm. Hmm. People were challenging each other left and right. My two of my closest friends in life are people that I don't even see eye to eye with. <laughs> and I didn't, I'm so glad that we didn't. Why? Because it gave us the opportunity to challenge each other's theory of thinking. You know, I went from, from meeting somebody, I'll, I'll give you an example. I went from meeting Jake Bear and not having any clue about him to five years later being in his wedding. <laughs> nice. We worked together day and day and traveled day and night across the state of Florida together. And we were two individuals that didn't always see eye to eye, but at the end of the day, it allowed us to grow one another by challenging each other's way of thinking. Yes. That's and great. I think sometimes that comfort level is something that many people, including myself, are afraid of, is yeah. being around somebody who doesn't agree with you. Well, it's tough because then you have to actually defend why you feel a certain way. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. We have a friend who is that way. Um, and just, I mean, even in regards to, to the election, I don't want to get political at all, but um, I have a very close friend of mine who voted opposite of what I thought was right. And then he was like, well, well, what have you thought about this or this or this or this mm-hmm. and all these different things? And I was like, well, I don't even I don't even know, you know, and it's it's good to have those people, like you said, that you you respect as a person. Maybe you don't see eye to eye on things, but in that they're able to bring different points of view and things that if you're if you're open to it, um, you can learn a thing or two from them, you exactly. know, and maybe maybe your opinion will change or maybe it won't. Um, but that doesn't really matter. You know, the point is to be able to take what you're um, take your point of view and, and dissect it from different mm-hmm. points of view. I think yeah, that's be valuable. confident in it. Be confident that you're making the right decisions. Yeah. You know, and confident because you've done your that. research, not just because exactly. that's what you've been told or, or that's what you've always think. done it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, having said that, um, so that's UWF, your time kind of as student body pres. And then, um, I mean, what was that? Like you said, you went on like a statewide campaign pretty much. I mean, that's, that's super interesting to me. I'm, I'm, I am never involved in politics. I don't think I'll ever do anything like that, but it's still respectable. It's still cool. Um, I mean, what was that like? And, and was that, did that take a toll? Was that taxing? I'm sure. So I actually did it, uh, two years back to back. So I went on the first campaign with, uh, Jake Abair, who went on to become okay, governor. So I'll refer to him as governor Abair. I, I was his vice president. Um, and so I learned it from him. And he had one of the best strategies, which was go listen to what everyone has to say. 
Go visit every student body president and figure out what did they run on on their campaign and what is it that they're trying to accomplish? Mm -hmm. Because you can go to somebody and say, hey, this is what I can do for you. Mm -hmm. But if I don't take the time to learn what you're looking for, then how are you even building your yeah, campaign or yeah, platform? That's Everything right. you say may just be right. irrelevant. And so when mm -hmm. it came time for me to run, uh, Vice President Hernandez, Yasmin Hernandez and I got on the road and we went and visited all the student body presidents. And we, in four days, stopped at 11 different universities. And we had basically a breakfast, lunch, and dinner plan every day, all the way until we came all the way around the state. Uh, and our goal on that trip was to just listen. Mm -hmm. What are students dealing with? What are they facing? And what can we do at the state level to help them? Mm -hmm. Right? What can we ask our legislators to, to work towards uh, in order to build a solution? And we went and did the whole wide tour. We took everything that we learned and wrote all of our notes down and came up with a strategy to say, you know, this is what we're going to campaign for. Mm -hmm. And uh, within that year, because of the one year term limit, working with the Florida Board of Governors for the State University System and several legislators across the state. Um, one in particular is Representative Amber Mariano, who was a champion for students. She's actually a UCF graduate, and mm. she was the youngest House representative to get elected in Florida. She was elected at the age of 21. Wow. And Making me feel like I'm not on the ball. <laughs> well, and, and look, and what she did was she opened the door to us and said, what is it that students are facing, right? She was a UCF grad, hmm. and she came in and helped champion several different policies with us, um, and we were successful after working with several legislators across the board uh, and the uh, Senate president, the Speaker of the House, the governor at that time, Governor Rick Scott, hmm. and we just asked for several different things over the time, and these were several things that were either already in motion or things that we brought to the table uh, and, and long story short, a lot of the things were addressed, right? And if they weren't the full solution, they were at least a somewhat of a solution or a step in the right direction. Uh, and one of those things that we advocated so, F, you know, so tirelessly for was an expansion to Bright Futures. And we were fortunate enough to see over $125 million get expanded for Bright Future Scholarship. Wow for students to be able to access funds so they can graduate school and get on with their careers. Mm -hmm. So that way they can start a family, build you know, their, their own personal foundation so that way they can start a life and whether it's you know, get married and have kids or to build a home or to advance in their company. We wanted to find ways to help students get to that position. Um, and so we did just that and we spent several weekends and weekdays in the state capitol hmm. and we pretty much figured out how to map all the way around it by heart. So wow. that doesn't tell you something. Man, that's wow. cool. That's that's awesome. I mean, that's the ultimate point of of college is to get started in life, yeah. to get a jump start in life. So any way that you're able to help students do that is valuable, I'm sure. Cool, man. That's awesome. So is there anything else before I move on to some of the things that you're involved in now? Is there anything else that you would kind of highlight about that time or, you know, if somebody's thinking about doing it, any advice that you'd have for them? Um, my advice is, is simple, is just do it, right? Because if there's something that you want to try, even if you don't like it, just try it to find out, right? I mean, I got involved in uh, a, a large number of things and I found out I didn't like some of them. Mm -hmm. But there's no ill harm in finding out that this just isn't the right organization for you or this isn't the right job for you. But if you don't try it, you will never be able to find out. And then you'll always look back and say, well, what if I tried that? Yes. What if I would have gotten involved? There, you're, if you're in college right now, my advice to you is these are the times to experiment, mm -hmm. right? And I'm not saying that there's ever not a right time to experiment in an uh, organization or a career path or a job or an internship, but my advice is go for, go for it, mm -hmm. right? And I know that's kind of cliche advice because everyone might say that, but at the end of the day, it's take the first step towards it and everything else will fall into place mm -hmm. whether it's meant for you or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's Take that great. First step. It's yeah. a commonality and pretty much everyone that we've had on this podcast. I love it. Time after time, it's, you know, just do it. Just go for it. Just give it a try. Yeah. You know, put your best and, into it. And, and chances are, if you fail, that's okay. Yeah. Because there's no such thing as failure. You're yeah. either going to love it or you're going to learn something yeah. from exactly. it. Exactly. And I think, but failure is uncomfortable. Um, and I think that comes back to what we were saying earlier, getting uncomfortable and in the in the scope of having conversations with people who don't agree with you per se that's uncomfortable you know but that's how growth happens yeah i mean most people avoid you know contradicting opinions or yeah or uh you know different beliefs because of that because they don't like disagreement you know right and i that's think good. and i think there's a big uh 
line to draw when it comes to fear because I think if fear drives your decision, Mm -hmm. then you won't be able to logically think about what you can gain out of it. True. Right. And so I think for me, the argument is there is no such thing as as losing. And I mean that you can either win and enjoy something or you will find out and learn that you didn't like something. Mm -hmm. And which is a win, which is a win. Right. Because now you're able to say, hey, I tried that and I didn't like it. Right. And I think a lot of people, including the people you've you know had here and, and anybody that's listening to this, there's been failure in life. Right. There's not a single person that can say they've ever succeeded at everything they've done in life. And that's including the CEO of Amazon and Facebook and Mm. all these big tech companies. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But if you don't fail, you're never going to understand what you have to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Right. Or to say, hey, I failed in this. What did I learn? And let me not make that same mistake again. Mm -hmm. Right. Whether it's an organization or, or whatever it might be. Um, and so I just encourage everyone to, to just look forward to failure, right? Yeah. Because there is no such thing as failing and losing. It's winning and learning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I would preach that to every person uh, that's listening is look forward to the, to the learning opportunity. That's fantastic. I love the way you laid that out so clearly. You know, it's always failing forward. That's, that's powerful. Yeah, good advice. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now jumping into moving from there into law school, um, maybe talk a little bit about... Um, I don't know, just about law school. I mean, that's that's interesting to me as well. Um, and then I want to jump into some of the not for profit and, and things that you're doing now. And you were doing some, you were doing, you were involved in a good amount of things while you were at school still as well. Yeah. Um, and so when I was an undergrad, I had to start studying for the LSAT to get to law school. Um, and unfortunately, I decided to take my LSAT the day after I had a very close family death. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't do well. And that just put me five steps below, Mm. right? And I just decided like, okay, maybe maybe that was a sign that like law school is not what I'm supposed to do. Um, But then I had to quickly realize that, again, there's no such thing as failing or losing. It's learning. Hmm. And so I had to just take a little bit of time, figure out what direction I was heading in. I took the LSAT again. Um, and you know, I think a lot of people would be afraid to share that portion of, you know, testing and whether you did well or not. Yeah. I say that it's okay to have to take something again. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like the point is improvement. Right. Exactly. And as long as you're improving, that's what's important. Yeah. Um, and so I, I took it again, uh, was very fortunate that in the six month period that I had graduated and went to, to law school, cause I was a spring start at Barry. Um, was I got involved in um, the family business. Um, and so I worked in uh, for a company called Nash Built Construction, and we do commercial developments of hotels all the way across the state of Florida um, as uh, developers and general contractors. And so that was a great experience for me to dive into. But again, it was a new experience for me, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't have personal construction experience. Yeah. Um, but I decided that that was something that I was prepared to learn. So while doing that, uh, I was also involved in a not-for-profit here in Pensacola called Inertia. Um, and prior to that, I was also involved with AMI Kids, um, which is- That's a, one I remember. Yeah, which is a local, organ, uh, not a local, is an organization that has a local chapter here in Pensacola. And I was blessed to work with them and to help uh, that program. Um, but currently, uh, I'm still with Nashville Construction, and I'm still with uh, Inertia Education, um, which has been a fantastic program started by- Again, students I met at UWF. Explain a little bit about in, what Inertia is for those people who aren't familiar. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, Inertia is an after-school program here in Escambia County that works to serve uh, STEM projects for the youth. Right. Mm-hmm. So we go to after, uh, after school gets out. Students have a choice to attend this program. And what we do is science, technology, engineering, and math uh, projects at extremely low cost. And we try to find projects that are fun for students. Right. Maybe the things that they wouldn't be able to do in class. Right. So very simple things. Right. Whether that's building, you know, toothpicks and marshmallows and building, you know, a building out of it or if it's putting Mentos and, you know, Coke bottles. Very basic things. Exactly. But sometimes it's the idea that students learn differently with hands on activities. Yep. Right. And we've been very fortunate to have the community support. Um, and that includes board members, the volunteers, uh, those that financially contribute because we do this entirely free for the students. Hmm. Right. And what we, right. It's completely free to them. And none of our, our board members on, uh, inertia get paid all the volunteers, you know, there's no personal gain there for anyone besides Hmm. watching students have fun. Hmm. Um, 
And then when I was in Pensacola, it was a lot easier to be at the programs, at the projects. Unfortunately, at this point, because I'm in Orlando finishing up school, um, I'm playing a little bit more of a remote role. Um, and so, of course, the board that's here in Pensacola ranges from, you know, Basil Colova, Jake Aver, um, Carson Wilbur, um, Vivian Dang, Jasmine Taylor, or Jasmine Singh, I'm sorry, uh, and, and several others. Um, and it's so important, you know, even Jameer Sellers, right? Every person plays a role on this board, whether it's from communications to working with our volunteer coordinating efforts, talking to the superintendent of schools hmm. about what schools we can be at or dealing with the schools to figure out what supplies we need for what project. Mm -hmm. And watching these people come together to come up with project ideas for students That's cool. is the, the reward of watching how happy these students get is beyond anything oh, that yeah. money can pay you. Super mm -hmm. rewarding. Right, because you have students come up and they're like, this is so fun. I didn't understand that this is how this worked. And, you know, the alternative of it is they can go home. Yeah. Right. And yeah. if any student <laughs> in elementary school is choosing to stay behind to do more schoolwork, mm -hmm. yeah. that should tell you that they're having fun. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right. And hundreds of kids have been exposed to this program. Um, and honestly, my, my favorite part is just watching kids celebrate when they win their, you know, challenge or whatever it might be, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's a, you know, a race to finish building your marshmallow and toothpick, you know, style building. Um, and it turns into a competition, yeah. right? And they're learning uh, more than just science and technology or engineering and math. It's learning how to work with other teammates, mm -hmm learning how to communicate. And we even encourage them to, you know, try a little bit of speaking or be a team captain and to build leadership skills. And so, um, you know, if it wasn't for the founders of, of Inertia, which is Basil Carson and Marcus Jackson, then we wouldn't be in this place mm -hmm. to see the students of Escambia County having fun while in school. Yeah, learning right? about stuff. Yeah. And the reason that they started it was to, to, to ignite this passion so that way every student has that opportunity and chance to have fun while learning, mm. right? And that's just a different dynamic of school because historically speaking, school is you go to school, <laughs> yeah, you no. sit in class, and you know <laughs> you may go home. And I yeah. know that there are some you know teachers out there that find a way to make it fun, and I admire them for that. Yes, yeah, few and far between. Exactly. But in elementary school, if a student is not doing well, it, it might not be because they don't understand it. Yeah. It might just be that they don't learn that way. Yeah. Right. And I was one of those hands on learners. Like you're saying, everybody learns different. Exactly. Yeah. And for some people, a lecture is good. For some people, writing it down is good. And for some people, having a hands on activity is the only way they learn. Mm -hmm. And there's not just one correct way. We're just trying to find ways to expose them to the several ways. So that way, a student who was once maybe getting a B minus or a C plus is now passing with flying colors because mm -hmm. they're like, I get this. It's not hard. It's yeah, just that it I didn't understand it originally. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so we've been thankful to see community support. We've been so happy to watch these kids succeed. Um, I'm sure you can see the difference in my my face and tone. Yeah, man, like talking you, about these kids. Obviously, you're excited about it. Yeah, because there's nothing else that people are a part of other than watching kids succeed. Yeah. Right. I mean, one day, like that, maybe one day that'll be my kid. Yeah. Right. And for this community, there was teachers that I had in elementary and middle school that I still keep up with in, in high school, hmm. right? They didn't have to invest their time into making sure that I got a, you know, a good grade. If I didn't understand something, many of these teachers would go out of their way, Yeah, hmm. right? They'd stay after school, but they don't get compensated for that. No, They don't get an extra, extra hours worth of work to stay behind and help tutor. Mm -hmm. And they still choose to do it. So if they're willing to do it for when me when for for students when when we were in elementary and middle school, then we have to start being that change for those new students. Yeah, someone has to. Um, yeah. And and it's not to replace teachers because that is a job that I believe is one of the most important, mm -hmm. right? But it's to help reinforce those lessons in the classroom. Uh, and for that, we admire every person in the education system, and we just want to be a part of helping uh, the after school program for these kids to continue to have fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It keeps them, you know, busy, keeps them occupied. They're not at home bored. Mm -hmm. Um, They're and being productive. Right. And yeah. we've been thankful for even, you know, sponsors to, to provide dinner for, for the kids and, you know, mm -hmm. even have family nights Fantastic. where we bring people together and say, come on over, watch what your kids learning. We're going to have dinner. We'll, you know, hang out and just have fun. Yeah. Uh, and that's the theme that we like to revolve around is, is fun. Cool, man. I that's awesome. It. And yeah. I, I love, like you said just a second ago, it's so obvious to see that you are, are so excited about that. Yes. And it's really, that's a, a super cool thing. Yeah. Um, 
and like you said, there's nothing in it for anybody except that just pure enjoyment of being able to help someone else learn um, or invest in younger kids' lives. I think the transition of community support happened when a lot of people realized that we as a team were just funding this out of our own pockets, yeah. right? We were like, that's fine, right? You know, you and I worked together at Men's Warehouse. I'd get my paycheck, pull out some money, and, you know, we'd put it in a pot and we'd go buy supplies, you know, as cheap as we could and try to create a program for as many students as possible, mm-hmm. right? Because at that point, it was not about the money. It was about making sure that students were learning and having fun and building this momentum of enjoying going to school. Yeah. And uh, eventually we realized, wow, like, you know, we had someone come say, hey, I'd like to sponsor the next next event. I was like, okay. And then that happened again. And then it happened again. And we're like, wow, there's really widespread community support. And so we got, um, you know, a, a solid board together. You know, we put up on our website. We started branding ourselves. Um, and we've been very thankful for the number of donors we've had in this community uh, to, to support these young students. Wonderful. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, that's a nice little plug for inertia there. Um, for anybody who wants to do a little bit more research and if you want, if you want to send me some links, I'll put those in the show notes Mm -hmm. as well. Absolutely. Um, I think it'd be cool to drive some traffic there. Um, so then in that case, what is next for you, my friend, in your, your journey, done a lot of things in the past, still involved in a lot of things. Um, but where are you hoping to go from here? What are some things you got up your sleeve? So uh, I'm, I'm finishing up in Orlando. I'm currently attending Barry University School of Law, and mm-hmm. I graduate, expected to graduate in May of 21. Mm-hmm. So I've got another five, six months left of school, uh, and then I'll spend the summer studying to take the Florida Bar exam which will happen at the end of July. I feel sorry for you. And yeah, it's going to be a rough 10 weeks. There's no question about oh, it. Man. Um, and then after that, uh, that's the golden question is where do I end up? Yeah. Um, I'm truly interested in, um, you know, working, you know, in a, in a legal position with, with a law firm or even, you know, as a, um, assistant general counsel at, you know, any location in perhaps like a university, that would be great. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, we'll see, right. At, at this point in time, I'm looking to stay focused on, on the prize, which is getting the degree, mm-hmm. getting prepared for the Florida That's bar the, exam. The first thing you got to do before anything else. Exactly. It takes a lot of energy and a lot of focus. Yep. So. Exactly. <laughs> you can um, get it and figure out what to do later. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I, I would love to, to end up back in Pensacola at some point, whether mm-hmm. that's immediately or in a couple of years, um, for the primary reason that this was the village that raised me. Yeah. Right. I mean, Pensacola to me is a community of people that come from all different walks of background, right? Mm-hmm. Whether you're a young student that's come here for college, if you're serving our country in the military with one of the largest military bases, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, or if you're just coming to Florida to retire because it's got great benefits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, to have these number of categories of people is great because that to me shows that there's a kind of a community sense of coming home. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, we'll see where, where life takes me and, you know, <laughs> kind of follow that path. Mm. If there was one thing, and maybe this is a bad question, but if there is something that, you know, kind of lights a fire, you're like, man, I'd love to do that. Is there anything that comes to your mind when I ask that question? Uh, I would love to work in uh, construction law or uh, business law. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and that's not necessarily to say that's the only things I want to do, yeah. but it's something sure, that sure. aligns with the uh, interests that I have right now and mm-hmm. in the roles that I'm serving in. Um, you know, th- while I've been in, in law school, I've been thankful to get some great experience. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the education system is important to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I was uh, in my first year of law school, I reached out to the University of Central Florida uh, and their general counsel's office to work. And so I was thankful to work there for about a year um, as a law clerk. Wow. And uh, spent this past summer working at the state attorney's office as a law clerk as well, or mm. a student intern in the felony division. And uh, again, during my time here in you know Pensacola and Orlando, it's always been about the people you surround yourself with. Yeah. And some of the people that were mentoring me at, in both locations were both people that just cared. And you don't really find that too often, but I got very lucky to find people that just cared about the success of a law student, mm-hmm. um, you know, whether that was giving advice or giving hints and, you know, tricks, uh, you know, so, so that's where kind of life is taking me at this point. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. And I know you've worked with um, your parents' construction company for a while in the past. I mean, in what capacity have you been working with them? So um, my family business is called Nashville Construction. Uh, my uncle and father both have been involved in the real estate development world for the last 30 years, um, and they've been involved in various hotel organizations. Um, and so when they decided to, you know, 
leave the operations of, of hotel properties and enter into you know, general contracting and development, um, I found that as an opportunity for me to begin learning the things that they had been exposed to their whole life. Yeah. Right. And something that they were so passionate about just made sense for me to say, I want to learn from you all. Yeah. Right. Yeah, You've yeah. been in the industry so long. Um, and so I was very thankful that my uh, father and uncle both said, you know, come join our team um, and work on some of our development side. And so I've been blessed to work with um, a variety of different people throughout the state, uh, whether that's working with the hotel brand directors or if it's working with subcontractors, working with our internal employees, mm -hmm. working with our accounts division and, and truly helping to fill the gap. Yeah. Um, and so anytime there's kind of a task at hand, I try to get involved to see what is it that we can do to make our process better. Uh, and we've been fortunate enough to have uh, exposure from you know Pensacola to all the way down to Miami. Uh, and it, it's truly a unique opportunity to work with family, right? Mm -hmm. Because you know not it only is. are they your family members, but they're also your, you know, basically you're, you know, somewhat of bosses and <laughs> yeah. also your, yeah. you know, your coworkers, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and that includes, you know, a, a cousin of mine that I work with and, you know, him and I know how to be in work mode and we also know how to be in, you know, personal family mode. Yeah, that's important, that's, bro. That's how that's, we are. It is yeah. Yeah, super. I mean, yeah, you have to turn it on and then you have to be able to shut it off too. Yep. Um, I feel like real estate especially is one of those spaces where it's, it's very difficult to, to shut it off. Right. Um, but you know, it's, it's good when you can coexist. And also, I mean, it's good when you have a relationship with somebody where you can say, Hey, you're out of line on this or yeah. something like that. You know, we've had to have those conversations between us. Um, but the relationship's all the better for it. So, yeah, okay, you know, exactly. if you have a family that's tight knit, that's right. okay. You, you learn to define the line of when you're at work, you're at work, yeah. yep. right? There's no f familial relations there other than defining what job needs to get done. Mm -hmm. And when you come home, you learn to turn it off. Yep. You realize that, it, you know, it's a, you know, father to son or uncle to, you know, nephew or whatever that might be. Um, and, and I'm very fortunate and thankful to work with my family uh, because I think that a lot of the passion that I have and what I do stems from watching my, you know, uncle and father do what they do. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they've been involved in the hotel industry for basically their entire life. Um, and so I'm, I'm thankful to have at least mentors within my family and outside of my family that I can lean on and look to for those type of uh, growth opportunities. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it, man. I really, I love it. You got a lot going on. Um, having said that, you're a busy guy. You're you're working and, and doing a lot of different things. Uh, when you do have free time, what are you doing? Where can we, where can we find you? So Right now, uh, I've taken a different toll in 2020 to, to start working out regularly. Um, <laughs> I can't say that I've always been that way. Yeah. And anybody who knows me knows that I would used to be found at either Buffalo Wild Wings or Whataburger. Oh, heck yeah. Uh, and I think you remember those days yeah, when you yeah. and I would go to Whataburger together after work. Um, but now uh, I'm finding myself enjoying quiet time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if that's putting in my headphones and listening to, to music, going on a you know, two or three mile run. Uh, or even just, just exercising, right? Um, I'm slowly but surely, I haven't really talked about this one, but I'm slowly but surely taking up some boxing. Oh. Um, and so I'm taking some boxing You heard it here first. And, <laughs> yeah, you heard it here first. Cool. Um, and so that's what I do in the little free time that I do have besides doing homework. But yeah. I've learned that you have to make free time. Yeah. Because um, yep. no matter what stage of life you're in, if you're in high school, you think you're the busiest because you work you know, a job and go to school and have sports. And college, you're learning what adulthood sort of is because now you've got real bills to pay. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you finish college and you start your first job and then you're going to end up having, you know, a family and then a kids. So you're always yep. going to have something yep. to say, yep. Hey, I'm too busy. I can't, I don't have free time yeah. and I can't, you know, take care of my health and exercise and eat well with a fruit smoothie or whatever it yep. is. Constant challenge. Exactly. But everybody thinks that they're the busiest. Yeah. Everybody right. does. And I think, you know, we have to remind ourselves as human beings that it's okay to just stop for a minute. Yeah. And you know, call your family member, right? Call your grandma, call your yeah. mom and just see how they're doing. You don't have to call them with an agenda. Just call to say hello. Exactly. Right. I, I try to make it my mission to call my grandmother every day, even if it's just for 60 seconds. Wow. Right. She, she just likes to know that I'm well and that I'm healthy. And she always asks if I've eaten, right? I think she thinks that I skip yeah. meals. <laughs> but that's just the, the way of life, right? Make time, even if it's for a short period of time. Right. And yeah. you know, you and I've kind of reconnected and staying in touch and, it doesn't matter how busy any person is. At the end of the day, you have a family or friends or coworkers. Just reach out and check in on them. Yeah, yep, make right? it important to you. That's exactly, exactly. right. So. Yeah, I mean, and it's so interesting how you said, if you don't schedule, it's not going to get done. That is true 
in everything. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm actually, we're working right now on, um, just implementing systems and processes for everything, you know, cause it's, it's been hard for us. Um, I've not been in the business for that long and it's hard for me to take what's in my head and, and tell him or write it down or things like that. And so one of the things that I've been working on for the last like week is trying to sit down and, and schedule every single thing, make sure everything happens. Okay. If this happens, then what do we do here? You know, if we have to schedule a showing, what does that process look yep. like? Um, and it's really, he can tell you, I've been excited for the last week or so. Cause it's like, it's fun to systematize thing. It kind of gamifies it a little bit mm-hmm. when you have different apps and things that you track it. But having said that, when things are scheduled, they happen. Now, obviously, you you can't live and die by your calendar. But if you want to play video games, schedule it, and it'll happen. You know. But when you schedule everything, then you're forced to sit down and look at, okay, what all am I planning on spending my time on? Yep. And again, you're not going to stick to that 100%. But you can schedule the time that you need for each individual thing, mm-hmm. and that's personal work, and then and then social. Um, that's super important. And I love, I mean, we've just recently, I'm in the same boat. We just recently started going back to the gym. Um, and it's, it's just some time off time away from everything. You're doing something for yourself, but it's still your, your mind is quiet and you can just focus on one specific thing or, or, you know, sometimes I don't listen to music when I run just cause I like to think, or sometimes yep. I don't when I'm driving just cause I like to think. Mm-hmm. I, I think I've learned with, you know, going to the gym that 90% of the battle is putting on your gym shoes, your gym yeah. shorts, and your you know gym oh, t-shirt. Yeah. Getting yep. there, and once you're in the outfit, you're good. Yeah, yeah. half the battle is done. Yeah, you know some people think it's the drive, right? The drive to the gym or whatever it is, but don't spend that one second thinking about it. Just do it. Yeah, yep. just well, do it, and then well, you're in the. Mode. Everybody knows when you're leaving the gym, you're like, man, I love that. Yeah, I'm, I'm so, so glad that I, I did, did that. Yep. And every every single person, whether you're going to the gym and working out or or going for a run or whatever, whenever you're finished with that kind of intense personal development or something that's difficult that you overcome or for me it's like making calls making cold calls or calling past clients and stuff it's like ah there's always something else that could be done but once you finish you're like man i'm glad i did that yeah but it's that couple seconds where you talk yourself out of it that you gotta you gotta get over (laughs) interesting life lessons here so Mm -hmm. awesome man well where can people find out more about you our we'll put we'll put links for inertia and things like that can people find you on Facebook, social media? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm on Facebook, uh, Keyshawn Patel. I'm on Twitter and Instagram uh, at Keyshawn23. Um, you know, I, I love sharing any of the experiences I have. Um, I believe strongly in uh, finding good mentors, and I've been blessed with them. Um, but it also means it's time to to return the favor and be a mentor to others that mm-hmm. need one. Um, and so, you know, if there's ever any you know undergraduate students or anyone who's uh, interested in the things that you know I'm involved in, I'd love to be a helping hand mm-hmm. uh, because, again, at the end of the day, that's what this community is yeah. about. Yeah. Yep. All right. I've been blessed to meet people through this city that just showed that they cared. Um, and it costs zero dollars and zero cents to, to help someone with some positivity That's or encouragement right. or guidance. Yeah. I Literally zero dollars. Yeah. Um, you know, and Just sometimes a little it, bit of your time. Exactly. And I, I don't think a lot of people are asking for a lot of time. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have a student that's like, oh, can I have an hour of your time? They're literally just looking for like one bit of advice that you can offer them. Yeah. So even if it's a text message, you know, there's no excuse that someone couldn't send a text message. You know, it, it takes all of what, 10 seconds? Yeah. You know, we're in the digital age, right, where, you know, you can find out if someone's on Facebook in 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if someone's, you know, reaching out, then, you know, find those ways to, to just help your surrounding community. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I'm glad to be here with you guys on this podcast is because I love seeing someone that I work so closely with chasing after something that that you all love doing yeah um and the only way for us as a group of you know people to succeed is to to help one another succeed Mm -hmm. and whatever that those goals might be and so we have to do our part to lean on one another uh all throughout our life yeah yeah well and that's something about the podcast that we have i've said this before on the show but um i wish that i had had a podcast like this when i first moved here because i mean we're just we're just you're somebody that they may meet at Walmart, you know, anybody who's listening, um, every guest that we've had on is just a local person here Mm -hmm. with the exception of some. Um, but I get excited about knowing and meeting people like you or like, you know, Walker Wilson or Taylor was, you know, some of the other professionals here. Um, like you said, you have to stick together. It's a, it's a small tight knit community, but those people who are really want to produce something, um, 
you really got to help each other out. And yeah. that's what I hope that we will do and continue to do um, with the show. And I really, I appreciate you taking time out and, and jumping on this with us. Yeah, so. absolutely. It's been my honor. I appreciate you guys learning. And uh, to anyone listening, get involved, you know, follow this podcast because this is what the Pensacola community is all about. And I think, you know, Pensacola is probably going to be so thankful at the fact that both of you gentlemen are here putting on this type of podcast uh, to highlight yeah. the people in this community. <laughs> no, because it makes yeah. a difference, right? Maybe even if one person hears this podcast and says, I want to stay in Pensacola, think about the impact that's made. Yeah. Sure. Right. Yeah, and right. those are the intangible, right? You may be able to say, Hey, I want to look at the number of viewers or the number of people sharing. Think about the impact it's going to make. And mm -hmm. I, I hope that you will remember those intangible results of this podcast. Good yeah. Point. I love that, man. I appreciate it. Keyshawn, thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, guys. Boom. Boom.